None of us asked to own anything. Every last one of us asked for a handout. Every last one of us asked for deeper access into the system of white supremacy. None of us asked to get out. It's dark as obsidian, and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The people of the desert need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. And welcome back to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees, you know what we do if you like this video well then like this video let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe we'll go ahead on and subscribe but before you click share this link welcome welcome back wifis to the new slaves edition of the wildest woman where we will be talking about the system of a down so you already know what time it is it is time to call the roll so i need all of my regulators and my liberators it's time to round up and read aloud All right, so welcome back to my old school Wi-Fi's, my dial-ups, and welcome in to my new school 5G Wi-Fi's. Do me a favor on the way in, go ahead and like this video because of course, if you like it, I love it. This episode is going to jump off the porch real quick. So, I have been dealing with being inundated with a lot of images and information about my community that I find to be quite unsettling. While I spend the majority of my time off of social media and not really interacting with a whole super lot of nonsense, I spend mostly all of my time reading books by the Black intellectuals and pioneers of my community, also watching speeches by Malcolm X and Angela Davis and Kwame Torre and so many other black nationalist leaders that I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm like, Martin and Malcolm would be rolling in their grave if they could see where all of their organizational efforts to pull black people out of oppression and lead us into liberation have led. It's like because two men got a good job, all of a sudden now we think that the whole community is ready to live in white privilege. And that's just not where we are. You know, I have seen our community be pulled down before in the past. You know, I didn't come through that whole civil rights era. My mother did. Like my mother literally went all the way through school, up through into high school before schools were integrated. So literally we are one generation for some of us who have older parents like I do. We are one generation out of segregation and this 
the fuckery, the shenanigans, the fool garrity, whatever you want to call this, the <laughs> this is out of hand. You know, the way that we have become elitist within our own culture is out of control. And so I came to the conclusion after listening to what so many like at first, my friends that are close to me, they can tell you, I did not want to believe it. I've been out in the community with men that are my age, with women that are really trying to move agendas forward in the community. So I did not want to believe this. I was like, this is just a couple of trolls on the internet. I even went so far as to say, I think this might be white supremacists in these comments who are like putting out propaganda to make black women think black men hate them to be divisive in our community. Like I really was going that far in my mind. But I'm starting to see that it's me. <laughs> it is me who is standing in the need of prayer. It is me who is deluded and out of touch with what's really happening in my community. But if I don't know anything else, I know when I see white supremacy at work. Because anytime I see white supremacy, here comes misogyny, its sexy cousin. These men that are out here rambling off long list of requirements and things that they need and want in a woman are white supremacists. These men aren't looking for wives. They're looking for slaves, okay? They're looking for some slaves and some servants. And the whole system, the mindset that it takes in order to try to look for people that you can subjugate like that, that is literally everything that black people have always been against in this country. It's everything that we have had to unite and unify against in order to make progress and progression under this capitalistic system that we have in America. The American capitalistic system is not based on a free market and open competition. It has bias and racial injustice built into it. It has a class of people who have been separated Okay, segregation from the rest of the population and put in economic binds based solely and only on skin color. Never in any other country has slavery been levied against a group of people simply for the color of their skin. And there are tons of other ethnic groups that have had the same type of systematic oppression levied out against them. But let me give you a little lesson in white classism so that you can understand what the ultimate goals are. Because you know me on this channel, we don't get anywhere unless we go somewhere. So let's start with the antebellum South. Let's start with the Confederate States of America. Then I wish I was in because literally when I hear some of you guys talking, that's what you sound like. You sound like you want to be back when America was great again. And you don't seem to understand that under the same system of oppression that you are trying to levy out against your women, you yourself would not have been able to eat at a lunch counter. You yourself would not even be in the same high value male situation that you're in right now if you could make the system that you're trying to enact now a reality. It's like I'm trying to explain to you the 1950s, 60s, 70s black woman was not a housewife. These women raise white children. We love them and they love us. But these men who wanted slaves back in the South, their women were not considered to be part of the slave class. It's like because you cannot dominate any other race, sex, gender group of people in this country, you have taken all of your vitriol and pointed it like a loaded weapon towards your own black women. And... <laughs> We shall not have it. We shall not have it. We will not have it. I said we will not have it. Oh. Not just because it's not right. 
not just because your women deserve better than that, but because this is the thing that is going to finally burn what's left of the black community to the ground. And I don't understand why y'all would want to see that and be a part of facilitating that all for the sake of white privilege and luxury. Because that's what that is. Having a wife that's a housewife is a luxury. But let's be real, because even the 1950s, 60s white housewife was a commodity for a white man, for the mad men of that time. But even that was not commonplace. You're still talking about a certain class of people. Let's take this all the way back to slave owners, since that's what y'all really want to be. And their wives were not given the task of cleaning homes, taking care of and rearing children, cooking meals. See, when you really made it, your responsibility is to provide that same comfort for your wife. Back in the slavery days, you could tell how wealthy a slave owner was by how his slaves and his wife and his children were kept up. If his slaves came to a neighboring plantation and they were shabby, they knew that they knew that dude was capping. I they knew that he might have had enough money to own slaves, but he didn't have enough money to maintain them because land owning slave owning white men back in that day would not have put their women in a kitchen. That's real luxury. That's really being about that life. Nobody who has ever had wealth and power and possessions has levied oppression against their own people. That is why when America was started, it was started with indentured servitude, people who were working to pay off debts, but they changed it and allowed whites to be able to come into a privileged class based on race based on racial supremacy, simply for the purpose of being able to ally white people. As long as white people felt like they themselves could one day be land owning, slave owning whites, well, they were never going to talk down the system of slavery. That's what kept white people from becoming abolitionists is the free market of if I work hard enough, I too can oppress people. It creates an environment where people can look up to the same people who oppress and enslave other people, i.e. our black millionaires, our black billionaires, our celebrities. Like I said, where are they when the community suffers? Where are they when things are needed in order to move the black nationalist agenda forward? Other than Kanye, how many of them are really running for office? How many of them are actually using the money that they have to make changes on a community level? Now we're seeing this revisionist history come in where white people are trying to say, oh, slavery wasn't that prevalent. Only 1% of white people own slaves. And it's true, but it's not. The only reason why that statistic looks the way it does is because the most densely populated white areas of the country were in the north where there were some slave owning whites in the north despite what most people think but the truth of the matter is mostly whites worked for whites in the north but when you come on down the dixie when you get down below that mason dixon line you start to find that the slave owning population in the South was anywhere from 20 to 56%. It was 46% in South Carolina of land owning whites had slaves. Now, while the majority of these land owning slave owning whites were not plantation systems, in order to be considered a plantation, you had to have 200 or more slaves. But if you had 199, guess what? you were still in that number. If you had five, if you had 12, if you had nine. So there's no way that you had millions of black African slaves in America and say that only 1% of whites were owning all of those slaves. Now we do have a 1% system now of white land owning people who have enslaved this whole country. But they have allowed their system of classism to expand 
and to include people into their group that keeps people from fighting against them. Because here's the thing, if whites in the South who are not slave owners have the ability to become slave owners, well, that's where your Confederacy comes from. The ones that formed the Confederacy and started the Civil War, the ones that had pulled away from the Union, these land-owning slave owning whites were a part of an economy. They were a part of a system. And that system was predicated on the use of slave labor. Everyone that was a part of this Southern economy knew that it was an economic issue. And the only reason, the only reason why the North went to war with the South was to preserve the union was because economically the mills and factories of the North could not exist and be profitable in the open market, in the world market, without the cheap products that were coming out of the South. They didn't want to have to import cotton from England when England is buying cheap cotton from the South. This was just an economic problem. This had nothing to do with the good and moral thing to do. So now to keep whites from jumping ship and becoming abolitionists to put away these land owning whites, which were actually keeping other white people, what we would call white trash in subjection as well. They were rather banned with those people. We're watching that happen now with Asians. They know that China's taken over. They know that the Asian market cannot be defeated. And they have a strong power base. They have a nation, something that black people in America don't have. So you don't see America messing with those people. They say, no, let us open the doors of white privilege and invite you in. And just because we done had a handful of black people get through that door of white supremacy, all of a sudden now we think we done made it. But the value systems that black men are wanting to use in order to subjugate their women that's not anything that high value men do. That's like literally the fact that you want a wife that's a slave, that is literally the antithesis of being high value. So I've given this scenario before, but I'm going to say it again on this video. I used to have a more affluent white male associate, counterpart, colleague. And he said that to me. He said, my wife is my companion. I chose my wife on the basis of her ability to be a companion to me. If she cooks, I appreciate it because now I don't have to find someone else to do that, but she doesn't have to. If her cooking causes her not to be available to be my companion, then she will not cook. If her cleaning causes her to be tired or unavailable for me as her companion, then we'll, we'll pay someone else to do that. And it's crazy because when you men have these conversations about what do y'all bring to the table, that's the first thing y'all say. Like, I've never seen a group of people that are so mixed up about what they want. And on the microcosm, I see black men doing this, but I saw it on a macrocosm. When Black Lives Matter had white people at their knees, like we finally had it all on camera. We had it all on candid camera and we were showing the whole entire world that racism was real. And they came to us and they said, what do y'all want? What do you want? What do we have to do to make this go away? And black people were like, um, 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 we want to defund the police. Um, we want, uh, reparations. Um, we want 40 acres and a mule. We couldn't even agree on what it would take to actually give black people equality in this country. None of us asked to own anything. Every last one of us asked for a handout. Every last one of us asked for deeper access into the system of white supremacy. None of us asked to get out. You're so scared. <laughs> Nobody said we'd like out. That's what we would like to do. We would like our own system wherewith to compete against y'all with. We just want an even, fair fight. Instead of tying our arm behind our back and blindfolding us, we would just like a fair fight. Black people didn't ask to own anything, and I found that odd. But I see the same thing on a microchasm when black men say, well, 
What do you bring to the table? And women are like, I can cook. I can clean. I can pay somebody to cook and clean. I can pay somebody to do. Well, why don't you then? Why, why don't you? Or here's a crazy one. Why don't you do it your damn self? Why should a woman have to be anything other than your companion? Because if she fails as your companion, whether she can cook or clean or not, she's out. So why not lead with what you really want? Why not lead with someone who is loyal and kind and compassionate? Someone who wants the same things you want out of life. If you want children, she wants children. If you like to travel, she likes to travel. Why not? Why not start with stuff like that and then move back into the levels of desirability? Instead of looking for a beautiful woman that don't have no character. Instead of saying you won't date a, a full figured woman, but then turn around and say you want a woman that can cook. Y'all sound crazy. Y'all sound foolish. I don't even know what that means. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. No, it's not. It's it gets gross. the people going. Like, how about you figure out what you want and then bring that to the table? And then why would we sit here and try to conform to all of these lists of demands and requirements? Like, y'all are like like terrorists. Like, we do not negotiate with terrorists. We don't negotiate with terrorists. Why would we conform to all of that for the most unmarried group of men? Y'all don't even value marriage as a, a commodity. Like out of everything that you think is black luxury, marriage don't even make that list. 60% of black women are unmarried because 52% of black men are unmarried. Y'all got us convinced that there's this scarcity model, that there's 12 black women for every one black man. But guess what? How many black women are there to white men, to Asian men, to like, let's stop this. <laughs> the whole way that some of y'all are trying to set this up is a system of oppression. It's nothing but misogynistic black white supremacy. Like these are the value systems <laughs> that have broken down America while we're dealing with people dying left to right. Like y'all don't seem to understand there is a new world order agenda. And part of that is depopulation. We're watching more people die from disease and pandemic than we've ever seen before, despite the fact that we got all of these vaccines. And you can't get me because I didn't say nothing bad about the vaccine. Despite the fact that we got all of these cures and antidotes, we're seeing people die left and right. The very next thing that you want to put on top of the pandemonium is a war. Watch one of those come out soon. And while we're watching black people be pushed down into poverty, while we're watching two jobs be the new one job, when we're watching our money not go nearly as far as it used to, and we still out here talking about the haves and the haves nots. I posted a video on my social media from 1973 that had Fannie Lou Hamer talking about how black nationalism could not stand the threat of classism about how we were going to have to get rid of class denominations in order to present the most unified black nation that we could. Like, do y'all realize we only 11 to 12 percent of the population? Do y'all realize that 30 percent of our males are incarcerated? Like, what do you want to who do you want to fight with? Like, we used to have black men that took this fight to white men. I don't want to hear it anymore about what, what a black woman got to be with a black man. Y'all going to have to take that to somebody else's community and destroy theirs with it. Because that, that right there, even white women themselves already know what that looks like because they've seen misogyny be a part of white supremacy. Feminism is a white woman's thing so if you really think y'all gonna put that hand of misogyny on white women good luck it's only working right now for a little bit because because they like the black dick because it's a kink it's a kink that they getting off I'm just gonna be real today I'm just gonna be really really real I have given you guys some very dignified videos but y'all gonna get that uncut premium today ain't no baking soda on this
That's all it is. And once they tire of it, like many black women have, they're going to put you back out in the same fields that you drug your dark monkey paws up out of. They don't see you as being human and being people because if they did, they would be fighting white supremacy with you. Instead of them doing an insurrection to try to keep Donald Trump in office, they would be out there right now. They clearly don't have no problem marching on the Capitol, marching on the White House. They're the same people that marched with us in the 50s and the 60s for civil rights. So where are they at now? And when we did have Black Lives Matter out there marching, it was more of them than us. So why would you try to use the same system that they're out here with us trying to overcome? Listen, I got a love-hate relationship with white people. And I hope y'all understand that. I have a love-hate relationship with black men. If you stay on this channel long enough, I'm going to say something that's going to offend you, whether you be a black woman like me or anybody else. I'm going to come for the things that are keeping us from having a fair market in this country. And that means white people stay in y'all lane. That means black women, come on, let's get this going and get this together. And that means black men, either you with us or you're against us. And misogyny is something that has never been allowed to be a part of our dynamic as black people. It's just never been a commodity that we have ever been able to afford. So I don't care if you got a BMW now. I don't care if you got a degree. I don't care if you consider yourself to be a high value male. If your community is not better for your personal achievements, as I always say, if you have not made the life of a black woman or child of the black elderly better, if that's not even on your list of things to try and do, Pack it up. You are a white supremacist. That's what you are. If all you want to do is capitalize off of somebody else and live an easy life, that's what you are. You're a capitalist. And we don't need you. Not only do we not need you, we don't want you. We don't want you here to be divisive and tear down your own community, to speak down on the same female black hands that raised you and birthed you. I think not. If y'all want some slaves, if y'all want some slaves after having been slaves, after seeing what that type of cruelty and capitalism, after seeing the lengths that people would go to to subjugate and oppress a group of people, for y'all to turn on your own black women with that same attitude. And I'm going to tell you something, black men, good black men that's watching this happen, that's sitting next to men that don't take care of kids, that's hanging out with homeboys that you know, smacking choke hoes, that call women bitches and hoes. Like we, we done with that. All of that. <laughs> it, it's out like pants sagging. And if y'all don't stand with your women to defend, protect and progress your community, Women, we got to stop letting good black men be good just because they're not bad. If they don't have that same smoke for the men that are talking trash on their moms, daughters, wives, and sisters, well then, well then we got to throw them in that pot too. Because it shouldn't be me or you or any of us having this conversation with our men. I have two sons. And I tell them this exact same thing about what it is to love and cherish a black woman. If you can't treat one good and decent, you know, if they too ghetto, if they too, keep that to yourself, though. Reach out to the people that are next to you and help who you can and be a good example of what a man is supposed to be. And I see that every day in my son when he chips the ice off of my windshield, when he takes the trash down, when he asks me, Ma, is there anything else that I can do? When he see me struggling financially with stuff. And the sad part about it is we have come to this place as women where we say, well, and I'm going to do a whole video on this. Well, you know, we can't make our sons be our, our men. You can't, you can't let your son feel like he the man of the house. But if he a son in my house, the only thing he about to do is go out in the world and be somebody else's son. 
I let my son take on the responsibility of the things that that he can help me with until there is a man in this house. I'm raising him to be a man and he is a man in this house. So he going to do in this house what men do. I mean, not, you know, not that, not all that, but teaching him to be responsible for a community starts with being responsible in his family. And we done raised a lot of baby boys and I'll be damned. Y'all have to walk over my icy cold dead body before I let somebody else's son come here and be a son in my house. And I got to mother him. Because that whole thing about wanting somebody to cook and clean, y'all want mamas. But then as soon as a black woman come in the energy of your mama, you're going to call her masculine. As soon as you put her over being able to do what you can. I said this on my social media as well. And you should follow me on TikTok at The Wireless Woman. That I was taught to clean by a black man. I was taught to cook by a black man. I cook better than my mom because I was taught by a man. Men do things better than women do. Y'all are the stronger sex. And a man should be able to teach a woman what he wants in his household. If he wants clothes folded a certain way, he should be able to demonstrate that. That's what leaders do. They demonstrate what everybody else in the community should be able to do. They teach, they instruct, they guide, they give wisdom. You can't give somebody wisdom about something that you don't have any experience in. I learned how to run a household from a man that knew how to run his household. So when I came into the picture, he was like, this is all you need to do. It's been set up for you. Isn't that what Adam did with Eve? Didn't Adam already have all the animals named and all she had to do was just come in to what was already set up for her? These men don't want wives, baby. That's not a wife. Y'all want moms. Y'all want mammies. That's what y'all want. Y'all want mammies. Mammy. My little mammy. Y'all want in y'all household what the white man had in his household to keep his woman from having to take responsibility for anything. Y'all want mammies. That's what y'all want. I'm going to tell you what you're not going to get over here is mammies. And all y'all pick Misha's and male identified women that think that it's okay for our men to put a hand of white oppression and white supremacy down into our community and divide our community like this. Y'all going to get what y'all deserve. Y'all going to get the very men. Y'all going to get the sons that y'all went and raised because of this. So that's all I got to say. And as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. Do me a favor. If you at least can feel where I'm coming from, drop that fire headphones emoji down into the comments. For now, class is dismissed, and I look forward to seeing you in those comments. Until the next episode, I'm out. You want to?